be spending a little bit of time talking about one of the most widely played instruments on the planet, the piano, and my passion for playing this and other music. I first started playing the piano when I was about eight years old. My parents took me to piano lessons like a lot of other little kids, and I didn't really like it at first. But um, after a lot of classical and contemporary study up till now, um, years of learning how to read music, the skills necessary to interpret compositions and Im improvise that I could do myself, I began to truly enjoy it, and it's become a passion of mine. Um, I feel that it's it's a, a great vehicle to express not only in terms of communications, but in to turn in to express the depths of your mind and I feel the beauty of your soul. So um, the piano, while I feel it can be played, you know, in solo or concert with other ensembles, it's not a solitary instrument. I feel that it can be played really for your joy and the joy of others. Seeing their reaction, um, as I as I do myself with the music, and having them feel what you're feeling, is a, is a pretty powerful. Uh, thing you can do with the piano. So let's talk a little bit more about this fascinating innovation. Um, the keyboard had developed a little bit around the Middle Ages already, um, but the invention of the modern piano, which is what we have here and what we use today, um, is credited to Bartolomo Cristofori, uh, who lived between 1655 and uh, 1731 in Italy. He was employed by the Medicis and the princes of Tuscany to develop instruments and um, for them and he was an export uh, expert in, <laughs> expert in the harpsichord which was a, a precursor to the modern piano in many ways where it had keys and strings that could be plucked and whatnot but it wasn't didn't really have the full sound that we know today and identify with the piano so um, he built the first piano it became really popular around the late 1700s a lot of the royal houses of Europe um, began to take the piano on and use it as, a, as an instrument and from there it spread across um, most of Europe. And it was adopted by prominent musicians such as Mozart and Beethoven at the time that really promoted it as an instrument and um, became more widely accepted by the masses. So let's talk a little bit about the basic uh, function of the mechanical function of the piano. So if you want to look in here, so uh, there, the basic mechanical function of the piano that produces the sound we know today as uh, key lifting, uh, it's a, a key lift that lifts the lever or a small hammer that strikes these strings here and allows them to resonate. And now this resonation of the individual strings uh, is what we hear, uh, but the strings by themselves don't produce a very loud sound. So it's up to the entire keyboard, this huge um, area here, this wooden board that really amplifies the sound we identify with. So there are three basic models of the piano that are most common used today, um, ranging from small upright pianos that you might see in um, people's homes or houses, small pubs, things like that where the soundboard is actually upright. And then we have the other two models that are more used for classical and performance playing where the soundboard is out, um, like this one. This is a baby grand here at Chapman University here at the conservatory. And they, they use uh, baby grands. So the other two that are grands and baby grands, um, this one here is five and a half foot long. It's a baby grand. And the other is the concert grand, which measures over eight feet and is used for concert performances and things of that nature. But the baby grand is more for small ensembles and um, and things of that nature. So pianos were traditionally made in Europe at the time and they had to be handcrafted because the uh, soundboard takes a long time to um, get the wood and you have to mold the wood into such a unique shape as you can see here. It's a it's a quite a curvature here and that takes a long time doing as well as uh, putting together all the strings 
the hammers, the keys, all the individual little components to make sure that it not only sounds right, but that the pressure is there within the keyboard to allow it to resonate, which is actually quite a huge deal. Um, it's said that if the, the soundboard were to snap in any way, the entire piano would implode because of the massive force that keeps it together and allows the strings, that tension, to resonate. So um, while they were originally made and uh, handcrafted in Europe today, it's become a more industrialized process. A lot of manufacturers such as Kauai, that's cool. And so that's a little bit about, about the piano, and I'll play for you just a bit. And uh, yeah, that's it. So here we go.